so do any of understand. you have anything to say to anybody on Zoom? Any like family or anything? I don't. Hello, there's, hello, hello. There's Lines, Ram, and Dev. I don't know. So. I hope you're doing well. I recognize any of my friends. Mary and Anna here. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything to say for the people on Zoom? What's up? I think my Russell. Yeah, Devin is on this. Yeah, he's on there. What's up, brother? If you'd like to be down at something. Yeah. That's not in the part. Yeah. Do you have anything to say for anybody on Zoom? Do you two have anything to say to the people on Zoom? Oh, this is, this is I heard on. about them. Yes, the camera is on, so they can see you. Hey, everyone. Hello. Is right, all on there, but hey. Is that all you have to say? Um, I think so. finally graduated. All right. Thank you all so much for coming. <laughs> Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Anything else more? Just no, just what's up. Okay. Okay. Got all that. So they said what they wanted to say. Say anything from other families of like students. Good afternoon. Hey everyone, it's gonna be a great night. So glad you're joining. It's gonna be awesome. Have a great one. It feels so good to be here all together to celebrate our graduates. On behalf of Northern United Siskiyou Charter Schools Administration, teachers, staff, I want to thank all of our families and friends that have supported our graduates as they've worked for this day. As we take time to honor our graduates, we know how important all have been working and we thank you. 
Our graduates deserve our undivided respect and attention. Today, as we praise their hard work and dedication, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. We know how proud you are of all graduates, but please be mindful of others in the audience. If you need to excuse yourself or a younger member of your family, please do so quickly and quietly. Thank you so much for your consideration. To start our graduation ceremony, I would like to invite up our superintendent and director of Northern United Charter Schools, Sherry Lovett, to say a few words. Thank you, Colleen. Good afternoon, everybody. As Colleen mentioned, I'm Sherry Lovett, and I'm the director of Northern United Siskiyou Charter School. Esteemed faculty, proud parents, family members, friends, and most importantly, the graduating class. Welcome to this momentous occasion. Today we gather here not only to celebrate the culmination of the students' high school journey, but also to honor their achievements, their resilience, and their unwavering spirit. So let us begin this ceremony with joy, pride, and anticipation. To our amazing staff, I appreciate your hard work and dedication. Your demonstrated devotion toward our students is so evident and has played an undeniable role in the success of the young people before us. Next, I'd like to address the families of the graduates. Thank you for trusting us to educate your children. We are grateful for your support. Your children are graduating as a direct result of the love and encouragement you've provided them. I know it hasn't always been easy, but your diligence has paid off. To the graduating class, we are immensely proud of you. Today is your day, a day to celebrate your accomplishments and to dream about the endless possibilities that lie ahead. Welcome everyone to the graduation ceremony of Northern United Siskiyou Charter School. Thank you, Sherry. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Barry Barnhart. He is the Siskiyou County Office of Education Department's super, uh, Deputy Superintendent. We are so honored to have him with us today. We warmly welcome him to the stage for some parting words of wisdom for our graduates. Thank you. It's truly an honor to be here. Uh, 32 years ago, I was on this stage uh, at, uh, as I was attending COS and um, in Grapes of Wrath and the Crucible, and uh, that kind of really took me out of my comfort zone, having to uh, apply for those uh, plays and try out and all of that. And, and that brings me to um, the quote that the class picked uh, for this year uh, by Neil Donald Walsh, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And I, 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 that quote really, really resonates with me and I wanna explore that just a little bit with you today. Um, it's interesting too, because when I, when I speak to a, a group of people, especially a group of young people, I try to go, well, how can, you don't know me and I, I don't know you, and I'm going, well, how can I make this meaningful to everybody here? What kind of common ground do we have? Um, and then I started thinking about, well, you used to, there's one thing I know for a fact that all of us, and, and you graduates too, um, expanded your comfort zone in. And you're like, well, how do you know that? Well, because in fact, you demonstrated it today uh, when you uh, came up onto the stage. In fact, when you were little, climbing stairs was not in your comfort zone, okay? And people out here can attest. You may remember, think back to when they were just crawling around on the floor and they happened to come across some stairs maybe. I can remember my own, in my own life with my four kids, right? There's a staircase and suddenly you all started exploring that. You said, wait a second, it might be fun to go up. And going up, to me, really wasn't the issue, was going up. It was always when they, went, they, they turned around, they go, wait a second, I'm, I'm up here a little ways, it's kind of scary. I've expanded my comfort zone a little too much, maybe. And they look down and they go, oh my goodness. So, and then they climb down and they climb up a little bit. And so I want us to think about uh, that today. And in fact, it was funny because I knew I was going to be talking about stairs today. And then when they were coming in, it was like everybody, as soon as you got to the top of those stairs, everyone gave you a round of applause. It's like, yes, they didn't fall, you know? So uh, anyway, even, even today, you're being recognized for, for expanding your comfort zone in, in that realm. 
Now, um, at the Siskiyou County Office of Education, uh, we're currently worth working with some consultants, some consultants called um, Studer Huron, and they encourage us to come at things with this paradigm of, of why, what, and how. And so I looked at your, um, your uh, quote that you selected, and I was like, well, why, why? Why does life begin at the end of your comfort zone? What is that, why, 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 did, why is that true? Why could that be true? Why even push yourself beyond your comfort zone? And I thought about it and I said, well, if you, if your comfort zone will expand to include things you once were intimidated by. In other words, the uncomfortable becomes comfortable. And to me, that's the essence of why, why even push yourself? Because as you expand your comfort zone, you'll become more comfortable going back to the stairs. Um, specifically walking, you weren't comfortable going up those, those stairs, certainly not coming down, but as you kept at it, as you kept at it, you became more comfortable with it. It's a great example. So what then, moving on beyond, beyond the why, what then is the important thing about moving beyond your comfort zone, or one important thing about moving beyond your comfort zone? And, and, and to me, that was, you, you can't do it all the time. Like if you like push yourself beyond your comfort zone all the time, you'll be exhausted. So give yourself a little break and, and be specific, be selective about those areas that you will push yourself beyond your comfort zone. Um, you know, when you think back to when you were all learning how to go up and down uh, uh, stairs, for instance, you, uh, you weren't just climbing stairs. Every morning you didn't wake up, have your bottle, and then go, okay, I gotta get to these stairs again. No, you're doing other things, right? So it's important to remember that uh, also, you, get, you gotta know um, what you wanna be selective about when to push yourself. And then the last thing is how, the why, what, and then the how. Okay, so say I wanna push myself beyond my comfort zone and you guys can all read it. Not only did you do it with stairs, but I know you've done it throughout your lives. You wouldn't be here if you hadn't keep pushing beyond your comfort zone, but you're here today. And so to review, what are some things that you uh, need to remember on how to push yourself beyond your comfort zone? Well, the first thing is to iterate. Iterate, do it over and over and over again. That's a basic tenet of improvement science. And we at the County Office of Education have really dug into learning. Yeah, we're still learning. I'm 52 years old, we're still learning. We, we learn about, okay, a basic tenet of improvement science is to iterate, do it again, do small tests of change to get beyond your comfort zone. Now, um, for example, going back to the stairs example, you didn't climb a whole staircase at once, you just did a few steps and then come down, a few more steps, right? You kept going back to it. Now that being said though, I think it's important to remember that if you want to like go big or go home, do that too. Right? Don't, oh, I gotta iterate, I got a small test of change here, man. You wanna jump out of that airplane with the parachute? Jump, if you feel like it, right? So, um, but I think that really iterating is important to remember, um, those small tests of change. The second thing in how then to improve your, uh, you know, go beyond your comfort zone is to build on prior experiences. In other words, one-offs don't cut it, right? Oh, I pushed myself beyond my comfort zone. And then a week, a month, a year, 10 years goes by and you're like, wow, I remember when I did that, I'm still kind of scared. I never expanded my comfort zone because I didn't keep coming back to it. It was a one-off. Same thing with the stairs. You kept going and going and going until one day people were clapping when you made it to the top of a staircase. The final thing is to celebrate, and this is what we're all about today. We're celebrating your achievement today. When you push yourself beyond your comfort zone, it's important to celebrate and, and acknowledge, my goodness, I've expanded my comfort zone. I've moved beyond. Enjoy the view. I'll leave you with this story. Um, I had the, uh, the privilege of, of growing up in Japan when I was um, three to nine years old. So I was, I was young. And I experienced the most heinous set of stairs I've ever faced as a young child. And it was on the island of Miyajima. And on that island, there, it's so cool because you go to this island and if you've ever seen pictures of Japan, you see a, a large brown gate, a large, excuse me, a large orange red gate in the middle of the water. It's called a tori. Well, that, that's Miyajima Island. Okay. Well, on that island, there is a large uh, mountain. It's called Mount Misen. Okay. And there's two ways you can get to that up to the top of that mountain. You can climb a set of stairs, which was my mom insisted that we do. She's afraid of heights. There's also what they call, what's known as a Miyajima ropeway, by the way, a tram that'll just take you, all you have to do is get on the tram, go up to the top of the mountain, and you're there in a few minutes. It wasn't good for my mom. She said, no, 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 we gotta, we gotta take the stairs. So up we went all the way to the stairs, and it was neat because at the bottom, there's all kinds of deer that you can go up and pet. But when you get up to the top of the mountain, there's that, there aren't really any deer anymore, but there are monkeys. You don't get to see the monkeys if you stay down on the island. 
Only by climbing to the top of the mountain do you do that. Well, I'm happy to report that, yeah, I did make it to the top of the stairs, and I, I enjoyed the view. I celebrated when I was done, and more importantly, my brother, my father, and I convinced my mom to get on the tram and take the tram down so we didn't have to write, uh, walk the stairs all the way down. So uh, I, I think I wouldn't have survived that piece. So once again, everybody, congratulations, all of you nine people, for the work that you've done. You have done great work expanding your comfort zone to get to this point, and I'm super excited and um, wish you the best of luck, luck as, as you explore how you're going to expand your comfort zone even further. I know you'll be happy with the growth you experience uh, as a result. So thank you again for the invitation. Thank you for having me. Best of luck in the future and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Barn Barnhart. Now we get to hear from a few of our graduates. So they, some of them have prepared speeches for us to listen to. So the first speaker that we're going to invite up is Braden Fisher. I've been going to Northern United my whole life. Um, I can honestly say it's helped me push outside of my comfort zone. Uh, through taking classes I wasn't comfortable taking, um, also driving to school. Uh, that doesn't sound like a lot for me. <laughs> driving to school though, I had to drive over Forest Mountain because I live in Scott Valley. So that pushed me outside of my comfort zone. And I'm, I'm really glad it did. Another thing Northern United helped me with was reading. Um, I'm dyslexic, it's pretty severe for me. So I flipped things backwards. And if it wasn't for the help of several teachers, several hours a week for several years, I wouldn't be at the level of reading I'm at now, which isn't the greatest, but um, I can read now, so that's good. <laughs> um, I also once heard it said by another student giving their student speech that parents and family members, they, they get to see us when we are little babies when we're cute, cuddly. Um, teachers though, they don't get to see that. Sometimes all they see are teenagers that are moody, or if you're like me, you're always behind on your homework, never had been on time. Um, and they were still there. They helped us through our problems. Even though they didn't have the memories like our parents or our family members did, they were still there. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to all of them and also thank my family, my mom, my dad, my sister, my nana, my papa, and my grandma, and all the rest of my friends and family that have been there for me. And uh, also my teachers, I want to give a big thanks to them. So, thank you. Thank you, Brayden. Okay, our next student speaker um, I'm gonna invite up is Brandon Montez. Hello, my name is Brandon. I've never given a speech before, but here I am. I'm really happy to finally be up here in my cap and gown, ready to walk away with my diploma in hand. But I went through a lot to get where I am today. When I first arrived at Northern United during my eighth grade year, I felt like a scared stray kitten. I was full of nothing but anger and caution. Ever since fifth grade, I had experienced a lot of neglect and unfair treatment from every teacher I had up until eighth grade. Even after I had switched from one school to another, it didn't change, not until I came here. But it wasn't an instant recovery. I didn't instantly feel safe and cared for. I didn't really start to feel safe until 11th grade. In 11th grade, I was paired with a teacher who was new to Northern United. Of course, as usual, I was wary, but I gave him a shot anyways. It took me a little bit to warm up, but eventually I did. He reminded me repeatedly that I mattered to him more than my schoolwork did. He told me to not force myself to overwork if I couldn't do it. This helped me begin to unlearn the mindset I had the genuine belief that all teachers cared about was homework and getting their job done, that they couldn't care less whether I lived or died. Of course, I had moments where I would snap back into that mindset, 
something would happen and I would break down. There were multiple times a year I felt like I was going to drop out, but I didn't. I kept going because everyone else told me to, even though I didn't want to. In the beginning of that same year, I was finally put on an IEP. At first, it was a little helpful, but it wasn't nearly as helpful as I thought it would be. It actually seemed to do the opposite and added to my stress. Luckily, after talking to my teacher about it, the school was willing to hear me out and came up with a solution, which ended up with me not having to attend meetings twice a week. This carried over to the next year, my final year of high school, and it's helped me more than words can describe. Therapy, along with my IEP and the support of my mom, my family, my friends, and my teachers, has led to this year being by far the best year of school, probably in my entire life. The flexibility of Northern United and the care from my teachers literally saved my life. I've struggled. I was in the hospital in my freshman year because of it. I repeatedly thought to myself, this is the end. I can't graduate in this condition. I should give up and drop out. But much to my surprise, my teachers never gave up on me. Unlike teachers at other schools, I was not dismissed as being lazy or seeking attention. I was not given up on when I literally couldn't do my schoolwork. I will forever be grateful for this school, forever grateful for my teachers, forever grateful that thanks to them, I no longer panic at even the mention of school. Thank you. Wow, Brandon, thank you so much. That was good. All right, our next guest uh, student speaker is Ali Grissom. Hello, I hope you all are having a wonderful day. My name is Allison. First of all, I wanted to thank my family and friends for coming. It means the world to me and my mom for making me a strong person. Secondly, I wanted to share with you all a wonderful, the wonderful help I've had going to Northern United. When I started off going to the school, I was pretty unsure of what I wanted or even if I cared what the future held for me. Over the time, I've had great support with many different decisions and great feedback when needed. I wanted to start off by thanking Kirk for not giving up even when it was hard to reach me, always letting me ask for help when needed and keeping me laughing when he could see I needed it. The support over the years to continue my education even when he knew I was unmotivated is something I'll always be thankful for. Not everyone likes school, but Northern United is a school that likes everyone and is very welcoming. I know Kirk is a huge part of why Northern United helps so many students. He goes above and beyond to keep in contact, and in my experience, he's always been a super concerned teacher, which is why he's great for his job. Thank you, Kirk, for not giving up on your students and keeping your classroom open to everyone, sharing your great sense of humor, and helping us out no matter how long it takes. Secondly, I wanted to thank Colleen for going above and beyond as well. Throughout these few years, it's been a roller coaster for me, but each time Colleen has met me at the end of it with a smile and open arms, helping me gain motivation throughout high school. She has helped watch my beautiful daughter while I finished work, and even though she didn't have to, she always brought us food and offered it. She's very kind and thoughtful and always goes out of her way to make sure her students are taken care of. I couldn't have asked for a better teacher or in general, a person to fill that part of my life when I needed it most. Thank you, Colleen, for supporting me through graduation. Northern is a great school. If you're looking for more of a support, they will go out of their way to make sure you are doing your work in the way that works best for you and the environment you live in. They definitely do go above and beyond keeping contact, finding different work tactics and working one on one with you. Another great thing about this school is working on one on one with most of the teachers have been a greater experience because they actually want to watch you succeed and find different ways for you to understand what you're working on for class. Thank you, Northern United, for the opportunity of being a part of your school. Oh, thank you, Ali. So those speeches were so well said and so heartfelt. And I know I can speak for all of us here today and say how proud we are of each and every single one of you. Today is about celebrating and honoring the hard work of our graduates, 
but it is also a time to recognize the support they have received along the way. The Rose Appreciation Ceremony is a time for our graduates to say thank you for all the dedication and support they have received from their friends, their family, and their community. So we're gonna start our rose ceremony now. You, you in the audience don't have to do much. They're gonna come down with some roses for you. Okay, now we've reached my personal favorite part of our traditions of our school um, is the student slideshow. So we're gonna take a moment to look how far our graduates have come. And In that 12 passenger van in a small club in Minnesota and the snow outside the first half. I just wanted my name in the star. Now look at where we at, still growing up. Still growing up. I would lay in my bed and dream about what I've become. Couldn't wait to get older. Couldn't wait to be some. Now that I'm here, wishing I was still young. Those good old days. I wish somebody would have told me, babe. I 
I didn't think I had the answers. Wish I didn't drink all of that blast first. Wish I made it to homecoming. Got up the courage to ask her. Wish I would have gotten out of my show. Wish I put the bottle back on that shelf. Wish I wouldn't have worried about what other people thought and felt comfortable with myself. Rooftop open and the stars above. Moment frozen, sneaking out and falling in love. Me, you, and that full time. We just begun. On the grass, dreaming. Figuring out who I was. Those good old days. I wish somebody would have told me, babe. That someday these would be the good old days. All the love you won't forget. And all these reckless nights you won't regret. Cause someday soon your whole life's gonna change. You'll miss the magic of the good old days. Never thought we'd get old. Maybe we're still young. Maybe you always look back and think it was better than it was. Maybe these are the moments. Maybe I've been missing what it's about. Been scared of the future, thinking about the past while missing out on now. We've come so far. I guess I'm proud. And I ain't worried about the wrinkles around my smile. I got some scars. I've been around. I felt some pain and seen some things, but I'm here now. Those good old days. You don't know oh, oh, oh. what you got oh, oh. till it goes, oh, oh. till it's gone. Oh, oh. You don't know oh, oh, oh. what you got oh, oh. till it goes, oh, oh. till it's gone. Northern United Charter Sis <laughs> Northern United Siskiyou Charter School will now take time to recognize gra the graduates for their many achievements and here to present their awards in, ac in academic excellence, academic achievement, and citizen citizenship is our school counselor, Tammy Van Heusen. Thank you, Colleen. It's really great to see family and friends here. Graduates, I'm extremely proud of you. And as you look out here at your family and friends, I remember how important it was for me. And uh, you're very lucky. So I hope you really thank them for coming and being part of the whole journey to this point. So thank you again for coming. My name is Tammy Van Heusen. I'm honored to be here. My first year at Northern United as teacher and counselor, and I'm super excited for next year as full-time counselor. And with that said, I've told some of you this before, even though you're graduating, I am still 100% here for you. You can come in, we can talk about careers, you can come in and just talk to me, but it doesn't stop here. And that comes from my heart. So please, um, if you need to, to talk to me after, I know um, Don, Donald, right? Yeah, we had a chat, so I look forward to talking to any of you and, and sharing how you can get a hold of me next year, because I'll be in Mount Shasta and in Wairika, okay? Okay, this is a great part that I take lots of pride in because all these students have worked really hard, and some of these awards are just super powerful, and I hope you really acknowledge when you receive these that you've worked really hard for them. Okay, pat yourself on the back, because it takes a lot of, oh, I have to get up, oh, I gotta go to school, oh, I've gotta, you know, meet my teacher every week. And so you guys persevered and it, it all pays off. Hard work does pay off, okay? The first, the first award, um, very prestigious award, is our uh, valedictorian award. And this is a weighted GPA. So it is top academic weighted GPA, grade point average of the class. 
And so I would like to award our valedictorian, Miss Nyla Ralph. Sorry, come here, Nyla, my dad. Okay, our next award is going to be our salutatorian, which is second place runner-up weighted academic GPA. And this special award goes to Braden Fisher. Okay, our next round of awards is called the Golden State Seal of Merit. And this demonstrates a high level of academic achievement and dedication in the areas of English, math, science, history, and two additional subject areas. So to reach this golden merit um, across the board, these students really excelled and their, their grades were, were quite excellent. So the first Golden Merit Seal State Seal Merit goes to Nyla Ralph. One more uh, honored Golden Merit um, state, state Seal of Merit um, is to Braden Fisher. Continuing on, we are, um, I'm going to present the President's Award for Educational Achievement. This recognizes students who show outstanding educational growth, improvement, commitment um, to intellectual development in their academic subjects, and portrays a really awesome growth mindset, always being positive. So that is going to be the President's Award for Educational Achievement. And that award goes to Brandon Montez. The next award is the President's Award for Educational Excellence. This award uh, is this honors students' achievement and hard work, and the minimum GPA is a 3.5 or above. So this award, there are two. The first uh, presidential award for educational excellence goes to Nyla Ralph. The second president's award for educational excellence goes to Braden Fisher.
The next award is called the American Citizenship Award. This award is uh, looked at with a student who has a positive attitude towards students, their peers, and their teachers, takes self-initiative, does things without being asked by staff, um, family, they're just out there doing what they need to do. They are involved in community service, they understand civic responsibility, they possess a strong character, they possess a, a strong character and courage to do what's right, which is integrity. That's a big one. And I am just super excited to award the American Citizenship Award to Brandon Montez. My final award that I'll be giving out is, is the Outstanding Graduate Award. And this award encompasses so many things, but I'm going to highlight some of those things that make this outstanding student. This student is well-rounded, they are responsible, they're committed to completing work and getting work turned in on time. They turn in their homework, uh, done or not, it's just there's a time frame and they're, they're hitting that mark. They meet with their teachers weekly. They let their teacher know if they cannot make their meeting. They're just super responsible that way. Uh, they have a positive attitude. They're respectful. I can go on and on. So the Outstanding Graduate Award goes to Miss Nyla Ralph. Job, graduates again super proud of you and uh, sky's the limit all right thank you I have one more award to give out we have a CTE sustainable agriculture uh, completer which means that this student did two years of career and technical education in the field of sustainable agriculture and Nyla come on down <laughs> there's a certificate and an honorary bunch of carrots for you <laughs> Teachers will now introduce each of their students before receiving their diplomas. So the, okay, <laughs> just making sure everybody's okay. <laughs> Uh, so, will the students of Don Freiling please stand up and come forward? Stop, stop right there. Donald Jimmy Mays. Donald is completing his 12th grade work in a year, or a year early. He's in 11th grade, and I, I find that really very miraculous, not miraculous, because he's a great worker, but just really proud of him. Um, Donald is hoping to travel a little bit when he gets out of school. He wants to discover new states, uh, Nevada, maybe Northern Oregon, and just take a little bit of time off. And he's considering maybe some trade school. I think a little bit of soul searching time is in, in his future. And I also want to really thank his family. He's got the most supportive family. He has somebody who came all the way from the African continent for this day. Wow. So anyway, Donald Jimmy Mays. And will the students of Donnie Allen, step forward. All right, Yulina Christine Cardoza. Now, Yulina is incredibly ta talented and artistic and loves to draw and paint. 
One quality she has that has always impressed me is her consistency and her reliability. She never missed our weekly meetings or deadlines. Even when I couldn't keep track of what day it was, I'd turn around and Yelena was standing there and be like, oh, it's Tuesday. <laughs> so it's been a really real joy to work with Yelena. She plans on taking some time off from school and then pursuing a career in cosmetology. Yelena, you've worked hard to get to this point. I'm super proud of you, congratulations. Erilyn Denise Crippen. <laughs> Erilyn is a fun-loving and outgoing person. I admire her carefree disposition and I enjoy her reading her creative writing stories. After graduation, Erilyn is moving to Tennessee and will be attending trade school to study welding and mechanics. Outside of academics, she enjoys playing basketball and writing. Her favorite subjects in school have been history and English. We're incredibly proud of Erilyn and excited to see all the amazing things that she will achieve. Congratulations, Erilyn. <laughs> Kaylin Jade Crippen. So I had Kaylin in a few of my classes and I got to know her and her family over the last few months. And even though Kaylin is quiet and reserved, she's focused and hardworking. For example, after looking at her transcripts, we found that if she pushed just a little hard, she pushed through, she could graduate as an 11th grader. And that's exactly what she has done. She has demonstrated when she puts her mind to something, she can do it. Her plan after graduating is to move to Oregon, get her cosmetology license, and work towards opening her own salon. We are very proud of you, Kaylin, and I'm confident that you will find success. Congratulations. All right, uh, can we invite up the students of John Dove, please? I am so incredibly proud and honored to be a part of Brandon Montez's story. Brandon Montez is a success story at Northern United Charter School. Brandon Montez is a lesson at the result of hard work and dedication. Excuse me. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Brandon is a testament to the value of independent study and what our program can do for students. The flexibility in our curriculum, the flexibility in our time, our ability to focus on the individual student. Uh, again, I'm just incredibly honored to be up here and be a part of this story. Um, credit where credit is due, Eric Claus uh, deserves a lion's share of that credit um, because he was part of Brandon's story last year and really helped Brandon mature and come around as a student. Um, and it's just, again, it's nothing short of amazing. And it's so fantastic to be up here today. Brandon, congratulations. <laughs> Would the students of Mr. Kirk Miller please step forward? Calvis Nando Soleris. Come on forward. A little bit more. Here we go. So I've known Calvis for a number of years. He's had a few different teachers at our school. I've had the pleasure of working him, with him for the last couple of years. And in that time, I've come to know him to be a very intelligent person, really. Super, super intelligent and smart, Calvis. Um, he's had some challenges in life, but he's, especially this year, he has really stepped up to the plate and met those challenges head on. Um, he is an accomplished graphic artist. He's already earned some commissions for some of his artwork. And after high school, he plans on continuing to do that. And his ultimate goal is to be an art creator for video games. And I have no doubt that he'll be able to do that. Congratulations, Calvis. And 
now. Will the, um, uh, Tammy Van Heusen's student please come forward? Brayden Lee Fisher. I don't know if I told you this, but when they told me you're on my roster at the beginning of the year, they said, oh, he is a great young man. And when I, when I first met Brayden, I'm like, oh my gosh, country boy. Okay, so he's, he's my rancher, farmer, and that's what I grew up with. And we had a lot of great talks about life and just our experiences. And it was really special getting to know this young man. Um, I would say on my one hand in, in all my years, he has in my top five, you have the best manners I've seen in a very, very, very long time. You are humble, you are kind, you are giving, and you have this silence about you. You don't always maybe talk, but you are a natural born leader that students look up to. And I just, every time we were able to communicate, I just could not get over how polite this young man is. And I'm gonna tell you, it'll take you far and wide. That right there. So um, we talked about different careers. Braden took the uh, manufacturing course at College of the Siskiyous. He was dabbling with that after taking uh, Mr. Claus's manufacturing class. So I was really proud of him for completing that. And we talked, we did a tour of COS and the welding program, just kind of throwing out some ideas to him. But he has an incredible loving family that has been great to get to know. He's gonna be working on the ranch, helping his mom and dad out, sister. And um, I saw some pictures of him helping the, uh, the pivot. It broke down and he was out there gonna get that ranch. That wasn't gonna stop him. So he's just a super hard worker and I'm incredibly proud of you. Good job. Will the students of Colleen Allen please come up? <laughs> Allie Elizabeth Grissom. I'm so incredibly proud of this first graduate. When Allie came to our school, she had a lot of work to do to meet her goals of graduating. In addition, she was pre preparing to be a new young mother. Allie always met the challenges of her schoolwork with a positive attitude, even when it seemed like it was too much. She never gave up. After graduation, Allie um, wants to focus on being a mother, getting a job, and pursuing her dream of going to cosmetology school to be a nail technician. Good job, Allie. And Nyla Jo Ralph. I have tremendous respect for this ne next graduate. I have had the honor to work with Nyla over the last five years since she came to us in eighth grade. And what can I say about Nyla is that she appreciates all, um, she approaches all she does with dignity and wisdom far beyond her years. While she is quiet, um, I know that also she's incredibly strong and very focused, as you guys probably already could tell. <laughs> she faces challenges with her head held high and pushes herself to go above and beyond what is expected of her. It is because of this that she is graduating with the highest of honors. Nyla's plan for the future is that she is going to take a gap year and then she's going to decide what her next path will, where her next path will take her. One thing is for certain, whichever path Nyla takes, whether it's getting a job or going to college, I know that she is going to have great success in whatever she puts her mind to. Congratulations, Nyla. As we close this chapter of our academic uh, journey for this class of 2024, 
I want to take a moment to acknowledge the unique paths that had led you to this milestone. For most of you, and this might be a surprise to all of you, I don't know, but this might be their first in-person graduation ceremony since they graduated eighth grade during the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic. So despite starting high school online, your class has demonstrated um, adaptability and strength. Over the last four years, they navigated remote learning, social distancing, and the uncertainty of time with grace and determination, providing, um, improving that even in the face of adversity, their spirit cannot be dimmed. Now, as you stand at the start of your new beginning, that theme that we talked about earlier today, life begins at the end of your comfort zone, resonates more deeply than ever before. You've already experienced the discomfort of change and uncertainty, and yet you've emerged stronger and more resilient. As you step into the new chapter of your life, I urge you to carry this lesson with you always. Embrace that discomfort. It's a sign of growth. And see every challenge as an opportunity to discover your true potential. Remember, it's when you push beyond those boundaries of that comfort zone that you truly begin to live. I have no doubt that the lessons you've learned and the experience you've gained will guide you as you continue to grow, learn, and make your mark on this world. So before we send our graduates off with a final cheer, please note the following. Please take some time to get some pictures with your family while you're wearing your caps and gowns, but remember to return them out um, in the foyer. Um, also, we have cupcakes for everyone to enjoy, so please make sure you grab one on your way out. So let's all honor our graduates by letting them ex exit the stage first before we depart. But I didn't forget anything, I, I promise you, I'm getting there. Would the graduates please stand up? Class of 2024, please move your tassels to the left. You guys did it, good job. <laughs> Thank you.